Hey everyone, Cody here. And today I wanna to talk about what types of painting sell best. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because some people have multiple talents that they kind of want to explore or maybe you have an idea of how you want to paint, but you don't know if it's gonna sell or not. Well, I actually have a list of the top 10 types of abstract paintings that sell the best. And actually not just abstract, but just paintings in general. So I'm gonna give you the top type, top 10 types of paintings that sell the best. Now this this list I actually got from a site called uh, Felt Magnet. I have the list here. Uh, so I got it from a site called Felt Magnet. I will actually link to them in the description because I will be pulling from that article, from that list, um, and I wanna give them credit. And they actually got the top 10 list from uh, Art Business Today. So to, to cite all my sources right up front, I'm gonna tell you that right now. So we're gonna go through the list starting at number one and kind of going down um, and just talking about the different types of paintings that sell best so that you can kind of get an idea of the types of paintings that you do uh, are going out to a viable market. Now, just know that just because you make a certain type of painting that may not be on this list, that doesn't mean it's not gonna sell, okay? What it means is that it's just not in the most commonly sold type of painting. But again, that doesn't necessarily mean that it can't sell, right? So if you wanna know what those are, let's get into it. So the first one is actually traditional landscapes. This is the type of painting that Bob Ross did, you know, where you can actually clearly tell uh, what it is that's being depicted in that landscape. So, you know, you can see the little cottage, you can see the waterfall, you can see the trees, you can see all of those things. They all have some level of detail, so you know exactly what it is that you're looking at. So traditional landscapes are actually the number one selling uh, type of painting in the world. And I think that this is actually because uh, traditional landscapes actually kind of give you um, they give you a sense of homage, right? So like you can look at that and if it's done really well, you know, you can kind of get that that sense that you're there. And I think that Bob Ross probably had a huge part to play in the popularization of that because a lot of people who buy art probably are older people that buy that type of painting and they probably grew up with seeing Bob Ross on TV or at least knowing who he is. So I don't know for sure. I don't have any resources or proof to back that up. I just have a, a hunch that because of that, he probably played a large part in that. So the second type of painting is local views. So this is, you know, maybe a cafe or, uh, you know, just looking down like a street, right? Looking down uh, the street where it has like New York and you kind of see the buildings on the sides or, you know, maybe it's a little gas station or, you know, things like that, where it's just kind of localized areas as opposed to just the landscape where you're seeing like kind of maybe an, a wilderness with a, a cottage and it may or may not be representational of an actual thing. The actual local view would be something that does represent something that does exist. And the local views, again, you know, I kind of think of those James Dean uh, pictures. If you've ever seen those, you know, it's like him at the diner or uh, I don't remember the painter uh, is like the Hooper, Edward Hooper or something like that. It's the artist that creates these kind of dystopian paintings. And the people were saying it kind of represents how we are in quarantine uh, because it's like one person in a diner all by themselves or whatever. Um, so local views, you know, these, uh, these paintings that represent, you know, scenes that are familiar to us. So not just familiar in a sense, but actually familiar because it represents a place that is close to us. So the third one is modern or semi-abstract landscapes. So this is where we get into, you know, the more abstract style of painting. And these would be obviously more kind of distilled paintings where, you know, maybe it's something like this where, you know, it's a couple of lines across the canvas. So it's like, maybe it's a light blue across the top and, you know, then you have like a dark blue to kind of separate, maybe representing water. And then you have like a, a green or a brown or something like that under that to really represent, um, you know, kind of just, this idea of a landscape, but not quite enough detail to actually show it. In fact, I uh, give me a second. Okay, so this is an example of an abstract landscape. So this is one that I did, it's called Skies Over Plateaus. And you can clearly see, well, clearly, uh, you can see that this is, this represents, you know, the plateaus, you've got a cloud, a single cloud, and the sky and these mountains here. Obviously it's all representational and you can you can get it. If I tell you what's going on, you understand that this is an abstract landscape. So that is the third uh, most selling type of painting. And, and it makes a lot of sense because 
I feel like uh, these abstract landscape paintings, they fit in really well in a lot of different areas. You can put them up and it's like, people can look at it like, oh, that's a nice painting. It's not very dynamic necessarily, but it's it's very calming to look at. And it kind of reminds us of maybe like a Rothko painting where it's like, it's very kind of, you know, it's cool, it's dominant, but it's not necessarily like, there's not a lot going on, right? So that's number three. Uh, number four is just abstract in general. So. The list just says abstracts. Um, I'm gonna say it probably means like abstract expressionism, something like that where it's more maybe like this, right? There's a little more going on than just say a simple landscape. Um, and so this, I don't know if this will quite be like a, like a Jackson Pollock type like painting or something like that. Um, but it, the list just says abstract in general. So I would assume it probably means something with a lot of color, maybe a lot of movement and that type of abstract painting where it's full abstract. It's not even trying to be a landscape or anything. It's just a representation of color or, or form or energy or something. Uh, so that is the fourth type. So if you make you know, that kind of abstract art, there's probably a market for it somewhere. <laughs> so number, uh, number five is dogs. It's quite simply dogs. Um, which that makes a lot of sense. There are a lot of dedicated uh, dog lovers, dog owners out there. And actually my grandmother uh, used to be a dog breeder. She used to breed Pekingese dogs. The little, uh, they're like little short dogs with long hair. I can't stand them. No, no offense to them or anything or to my grandmother, but I, I wasn't a big fan of these dogs. I just thought they were kind of weird. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, she loved these Pekingese. She bred them, she showed them. She had like 16 of them at one time. It was crazy trying to, you know, cause I lived with her for a while when I was younger and it's just having all these dogs in the house was nuts. Um, but she loved them, right? And she had pictures of Pekingese and you know, she had Pekingese everything, right? So, so she was very dedicated towards that. So it makes a lot of sense that you know, people would love their dogs and they would want a painting of it, especially if maybe that dog passes away or, you know, uh, you know, they just are infatuated with a certain type of dog, you know, people get these paintings. So dogs, you know, people are very dedicated when it comes to dogs. And actually my wife's mom has like a certain couple of dogs. I'm not gonna say what, but she has some, you know, magnets and stuff and little keychains like I'm a such and such owner or the, the bumper stickers, you get what I'm saying. So people are very dedicated when it comes to dog ownership. So that is uh, that is number five. So number six is figure studies. Um, so figure studies is usually like people or settings, right? So uh, it's people like doing something in some kind of action. And this excludes nudes, like nude paintings. And we're going to kind of come back to that because that's actually later on. So the figure studies is would be like, you know, people being in a specific position or people, you know, normally like when it's a scene of something happening, uh, it could even be, you know, fruit in a basket or something like that. It's just figures in general. So you're making a painting based on a figure. Uh, so that is actually number six. Number seven is seascapes, harbors, and beach scenes. So these are all kind of lumped together, these coastal type scenes. Um, and these are actually number seven. So the seascapes, you know, the beach scenes, uh, the coastlines, the harbors, that kind of thing, all these little nautical type paintings is, is probably what I would uh, group them under. These are our number seven, which makes a lot of sense because it's not quite as, um, you know, popular as just maybe abstract landscapes, which don't necessarily say anything and kind of fit in a nice category. Or it's not like these homey kind of, um, you know, paintings that you see when you like see a cottage in the middle of the woods and you just think, oh man, I wish I could just be there by myself, All right? These coastal scenes are a little bit different. They generally indicate a little bit more life or even maybe a little bit of loneliness. If, and, and fun fact, so if you don't know my backstory, the very first painting I ever painted as kind of an adult, right? Where I, I wasn't like a little kid painting by numbers. But the first painting I ever actually painted uh, intentionally was a painting of a lighthouse on a coast. And I painted this in art school. It was not very good. I actually still have that painting um, from like, you know, almost 20 years ago. I still have that painting. And my art teacher told me it was not good. <laughs> and it wasn't even abstract, right? It was an actual like, I don't know if it would be like a naturalistic or surrealistic type of painting. Um, but you know, I made this painting. It was not very good. You could almost say it was abstract. It was that bad, right? 
and and that's not a bash on abstract it's just the lines were not clean and you know the colors were kind of muddy and stuff like that but anyway that was actually the first painting i did was a was like a coastal um you know type painting of a of a lighthouse and maybe maybe i'll pull it out one day and show you guys and maybe we'll try to do an abstract version of it or something i, I don't know we'll go crazy with it i don't know. anyway that is number seven which makes a lot of sense you know there's kind of a nostalgia especially if you have some kind of uh past with you know, coastal lines. Maybe you lived on one, maybe your family, you know, had to do with, you know, boats or something, or, you know, just that kind of thing, that that feeling of, of the ocean um, or water that, you know, that resonates with a lot of people. So that makes a lot of sense on why those would be popular. So number uh, eight is wildlife, just in general. And I think it just says wildlife. I'm gonna assume that probably means outside of domesticated normal animals like just you know cats and dogs obviously we cover dogs cats isn't even on the list sorry folks um but probably means like you know, cows and buffalo birds that types of thing things that are actually out in nature um those are pretty decent selling which again makes sense you know especially if you get someone who you know is a farmer and they really love animals they might have those types of animals or someone who loves birds or someone who you know loves bison like those indian paintings you know there's a lot of native american paintings of bison you know and stuff like that or you know those wolves you know th that kind of thing and then that's not to fit it in that category but just to make a point that you know there's certain animals that fit into certain niches that people really resonate with. So uh, wildlife is number eight. Number nine is impressionistic landscapes. And I think I have an idea exactly of kind of what they're talking about. Um, I guess this would kind of be like a Monet, but I don't know for sure how his would fit into that. It's these really, um, they're abstract paintings they're kind of like in between right so they're abstract and where the detail isn't so fine that you know exactly what it's looking at, like a bob ross but it's not so abstract that you don't know what it is right hey everyone interrupting cody here and i'm interrupting my own video because i actually kind of gave a wrong definition of impressionism uh from this point on so impressionism i thought was actually applying heavy amounts of paint i was wrong i actually did some basic research because you know, I couldn't do that before the video uh, and found out that Impressionism is actually usually thin brush strokes. So a lot of Impressionistic painters, which I was right about, including Monet in that list. Monet was an Impressionistic painter, but instead of what I thought they used heavy brush strokes or a lot of paint, what it normally was, was really thin brush strokes and they were more worried about capturing the essence of like a scene of you know a landscape or you know somewhere even portraits um they were more worried about capturing the color and the essence of uh you know a scene as opposed to the detail so they used uh usually thin and, and kind of broken uh brush strokes to capture uh, painting and sometimes they wouldn't have necessarily all the detail there but they would have a lot of color to really make that painting come alive and so that is an impressionism painting and again i was wrong about that so i wanted to clear that up and and i just wanted to give you the right information on that in this video so that's it i'm going to cut back to the other video the last one is nudes which i kind of touched on earlier I don't think I really have to explain why nudes would be so popular. You know, and honestly, I, I it's not my cup of tea. Obviously, I've, I'm an artist and that doesn't necessarily mean I agree with everything. Although I, I've seen nudes that were done very well. Um, but I, I do understand the the concept of, you know, people just enjoy, you know, the human body. And it's even if it wasn't something that was adult, you know, just seeing, you know, a figure of someone kind of in a natural habitat, I guess, I can understand why people would just kind of find that fascinating if it wasn't anything else. I'm not going to kind of get into that um, or even the motives of why people buy that type of art because it's really up to them. That's on them. I don't, I'm not passing any judgment. I really don't care what you buy. I just personally you know, don't prefer that. Those are the top 10. So if you create art in any one of those categories, then you're probably covered. Or if you're thinking about doing art, because you might be able to kind of do art in one of these categories, these are the top tens. And so, you know, if you're considering kind of, you know, maybe what category to go into, or does the type of work that you do uh, sell? Because 
the, the thing is, folks, is that, you know, if you're selling art and it's just not going anywhere, you're trying to sell pieces and they're just not selling, you might think, well, maybe I'm in the wrong category. But the truth is, is that if you fit in one of these categories, it's probably that you're not in the wrong category. It's probably that there's just so much dang competition out there. There's a lot of talented artists. And it's not that you're any more or less talented than anyone else. It That probably is true. We're all better than some, worse than others, right? That's just how life works. Unless we were at the top of the, the chain, right? And even then, those people make things that aren't that great or, you know, or if they're, they are the best and no one can beat them at that thing, it's only because they've been doing it for so long and we're just not at that level, right? But the thing is, is that it's not necessarily that you're probably in the wrong category. It's just that they've been doing it for a long time and you kind of still have to build up your notoriety. You have to basically put yourself out there and because there's so much... There's so much noise out there and there's so much competition. You really have to drive it home on why people should choose your eyes. So you really just have to keep pushing through and promoting that stuff to, to really get it out there for people to see. So that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you did, please let me know. If not, you can let me know. Uh, be sure to you know like, subscribe, all the cool stuff. If you really found it valuable, if not, then I would totally understand you not watching another one of my videos, your call. Anyways, I appreciate you watching. Thank you for all of your attention. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you then.